When you first open Design Shop, there are a lot of toolbars and windows for you to get used to. Let's take a look at Design Shop, take a tour, and see if we can't figure that out. On the top, you will see the name of your software as well as the level and the name of the project that you are currently working in. Right below that, you will see some menu bars. If I click on the menu bar, it will give me a, a drop down of all the different menu items. If I look at those menu items, I can see that I have commands. I also have keyboard shortcuts to the right and icons to the left. If I have an icon available, it means it's most likely available on one of the toolbars below. So let's take a look at those toolbars. So on these toolbars, this first chunk of toolbars is mostly my file options. It's going to be creating a new one, opening an existing one, inserting one file into another, saving them, cut, copy, paste, undo, redo, those kinds of things. The next one over is going to be your zoom bars, or your zoom tools, I should say. And then beside that, you're going to have a ruler and some of your display options. So this is kind of zoom and then viewing. And then the last little bit is, to some extent, um, file manipulation in that I can update my, or my locks and trims, I can center my design, and then I have some digitizing assistance available after that. Um, let's take a look at utilizing a few of those tools. So if I go into my software, if I want to know what something does, I can hover over it. The first one is new, that creates a new project. The next one over is open, same as going to file and open. And when I do that, I am going to navigate to local disk C, and then there's a designs folder. This is a folder that's loaded with your software full of sample designs, and that is a great place to start with some of your practicing and getting used to your software. The first design that I want to look at is oneday.ofm, and I have my extensions showing. That's a view option in Windows Explorer. It helps me keep track of the different types of files that I'm using. I'll select that and then I will click open. It opens up on screen. There we go. The next tool that I have available to me is insert. So open opens a file, whereas insert takes one existing file and inserts it into the one that you're working in. So instead of opening it, opening it, cutting it, copying it, pasting it into the one that you're working in, you have the ability of just clicking on insert and this time I'll do today.ofm. I'll open that up and it will insert it directly into the file that I'm working on. Now in Design Shop, whenever you copy and paste, whenever you cut, whenever you duplicate, or whenever you insert, the X and Y location of every single needle penetration stays exactly lined up. So two day was lined up on the origin, one day was lined up on the origin. When I inserted two day into the one that I'm working on, it lined it up on the origin, all the needles penetrations were exactly the same and so they're layered right on top of each other. That would be rather bulletproof embroidery, so I want to make sure to remove that file. I'm going to have that file selected, it comes in selected, so all I have to do is click and drag it left or right. There we go, now it's not layered on top of each other and I can see both of them, I'm going to be doing a little bit better now. The next over is save, and you want to save fairly often. I like to um, save every few minutes or every uh, major change, but I'm going to go to save as to show the different file types that we can save to. So the very top one and the default one is a Milko OFM and that's going to be our wireframe format. That's the one that is the most flexible and most editable for you. Below that you've got a condensed file, that's a, a much older kind of Milko format. And then below that, between EXP all the way down to DSC, those are going to be our stitch files or our more universal um, kind of home files. If you have uh, other people that you are working with that are utilizing other machines or you're working with a friend that has a home model, you can save as one of these stitch files and it is just the plotted out needle penetration. So it doesn't have all of the information that your OFM file will. It doesn't necessarily contain color information. It doesn't necessarily contain density or anything like that. It is just those plotted out stitches. So it's a lot easier for those other files, um, pardon me, other machines to read. So it's a lot easier to share files back and forth. And that's what those stitch files are for. 
Below that, we have some art files. If you want to save uh, a, ren a rendering of your file in 3D, you can save that and then email kind of a preview to whoever you're working with, and that's a nice way to do that. Mostly, I'm going to be saving as OFM because that's going to give me the most flexibility and most options um, for my embroidery files. All right, next we have notes. If I need to keep notes in my file, I can click on this and uh, type whatever notes I need to keep in here. What kind of backing did I use? What kind of needles did I use? What was my placement? What was my color sequence on lots of varieties of colors of garments? Was it on a black garment or a red garment? And what kind of threads did I use for that? I can keep that all in this file. That way I don't have to keep track of a piece of paper. It's all right there with it. When I click OK and when I save my file, it will be saved with that OFM, and those notes are an OFM only feature. Cut, copy, and paste. Those work very similarly to other programs. I select something first and, and then I can copy it. I can then choose to paste it, and that will create basically a duplicate of it. Now, when I did that, you'll notice that very little changed here. Again, whenever you cut, copy, and paste, whenever you duplicate, the needle penetrations are going to line up exactly. So there is another pair here. It's just lined up right on top of the old one. Let me hit delete on my keyboard to make that go away. We have undo and redo. Those are everybody's best friend when they're learning to use a software. How do I do something? Oops, didn't mean to. I can hit undo and go back in action. We can go back more than an action. We have a drop down that allows us to go back several commands all the way back to the command that we want to go all the way back to. Instead of hitting undo multiple times, I can choose where in this drop down I want to go back to. Print basically prints a run sheet. It prints a preview of the design, it prints the color sequence and um, the stats about the design what's the width, what's the stitch count, those kinds of things. And it's kind of handy if you're going to take this design to somebody else who has never used. Um, uh, equipment like yours before. Now all this information is saved in the OFM file so if you're using medical equipment you don't necessarily need to have this run sheet but if you're taking this to somebody else if you're taking this to a friend that has a home machine and they want to know exactly what you were doing that's kind of a handy way to do it and you can even um, print that off and mail it to them or, or save it as a, a PDF and email that to them as well. All right help I don't know how to do something, I'm going to hover over it, find out what the tool is actually called with that tooltip, and then I'm going to click on help and find out how to do it. Zoom tools help you zoom around your, uh, your design, zoom in to get really close to the stitches, zoom out and see the whole thing. The ruler allows me to click on the ruler and then I have a ruler on my screen. What that allows me to do is click and drag across a form and see what that measurement is in inches and in points and that's kind of handy for me when I'm trying to measure how long a stitch actually is. Is it longer than the diameter of a needle? Am I going to get thread breaks? Is it too long? Is it going to snag and pull out? This is the tool that I tend to use to do, do that. Um, it shows it in inches and in points and just for uh, a point of reference, a point is a tenth of a millimeter or there are 254 points per inch. Whether it shows it in inches or in centimeters or millimeters depends on your preferences. Display currently selected hoop. If I am trying to make sure that my design fits within a certain hoop, I'm going to have that hoop displayed on screen. To do that, I'm going to right click on this. When I right click, I get the preferences for that tool. I bring up Hoop Manager and I can select from the hoop name drop down and choose what hoop I want to use. So in this case, I'm going to use the 12 by 6 inch hoop. I hit apply and OK. And that chose my hoop, but it didn't show it up on screen. So I'm going to left click on that icon to have that hoop show. The solid lines are the hoop itself. The dotted line is the hoop limit. So I want to make sure that I stay within that dotted line, make sure that I keep within that hoop limit, and that way I know I'm not going to hit a hoop, and I'm nice and safe inside that hoop limit. The next one over is the design origin. If I left click on that, it will show the origin. That is 0, 0, X, and Y. So that's in this case very much the center of the hoop and it's a nice way to figure out where in the hoop I'm really going to be sewing. The next one over is show grid. If I left click on it the grid will display. That's a pretty tight grid and that's got a lot of squares on it. If I want to change that I can right click on this 
that brings up the properties for both the grid and the origin. I can then change the spacing for my grid. So I could change this to be a one inch grid with eight subdivisions. And now when I hit apply and OK, my dark line is every inch, my light line is every eighth of an inch. And if I wanted it to snap to that grid, I could go to view and turn on snap to grid mode. Snap, snap to grid mode does not care whether the grid is being displayed or not. It will always snap to that grid. If I want a little bit of a better preview here, let me turn this off. We're getting a little bit cluttered. There we go. If I want a little bit of a better preview and I just turn those off by clicking, um, I can turn on 3D and that will give me kind of a 3D rendering of what these stitches would look like. I can see the difference between satin and fill stitches much more easily this way. Other view options I have over here, show or hide graphic. If I am digitizing over a graphic and I want to see without any of my stitches what the, or pardon me, without the graphic behind it, what my stitches are doing on their own, I can click on that to hide that graphic away and just see my stitches. The next one over is show or hide stitches. If I have stitches selected, so let me select some stitches here. There we go. I can click on this to hide my stitches. Now that doesn't delete them, they're still there. If I were to sew out the file, they would still be sewing out. However, if I wanted to see the graphic underneath my stitches to make sure I didn't forget anything, um, I could definitely hide my stitches and check that out. So let me turn these back on. There we go. Now, this little guy right here, this is toggle connectors. If I zoom in real quick to this area in between these stitches, Toggle connectors deals with connector stitches in, this, in the design. So if an element ends over here and the next one starts over here and there isn't a trim in between them, there will still be a thread, but there's not technically a stitch there. Toggle connectors shows realistically trimmed and non-trimmed threads. That's what these guys are. These leaves end here and begin over here. There is no trim in between them. So there's a thread. If I turn this off, I'm not going to see that information because there's technically not stitch information there. However, when it gets to the machine, it will sew out and I don't like surprises, so I like to keep that turned on. Next, we have some, some more views. I can do expanded points, which just shows me every single needle penetration. I don't turn that on overly often, um, but when I need to see exactly what the needles are doing, that's when I use that view. Wireframe editing. And expanded editing deal with different ways to edit the shapes. Wireframe editing ed edits a shape. Expanded editing edits the individual needle penetration. So it's a very different depth of editing. Update ties and trims. Just checks and sees are my connectors far enough apart that I need to update my, my ties and trims based on your settings. And then one that I think is pretty important is center design. So let me turn on the design origin so we can see it. And let me zoom out just a touch. So we've got the design origin here. We've got 0, 0, X, and Y. If I click on design, or pardon me, center design, it will center my design over the origin. And so now you can see that's nice and centered. And in this case, it's very much centered inside the hoop if I turn that hoop on. So that's the majority of the tools on these toolbars. Next, we have kind of a blank bar up here right now. That is the property bar, and it will be blank until you have something selected. If I click on an element, the properties for that element will be displayed on that bar. If I were to click on a tool, the same thing. The most, prom uh, the most common properties are going to be displayed on that bar. All right, I'm going to hit escape to get out of this tool. If you guys are following along and you get stuck inside of a tool, hitting escape twice will usually get you out of it. All right, let me clear that. The next little bit that we have to look at are these tools here. So we've got this whole area, and these are gonna be our input tools. The first chunk right here are pretty much our input tools. So when we're digitizing, these are the tools that we're going to be using, these create shapes. The next little middle part, these guys right here, deal with editing. So if I need to manipulate those shapes, or if I need to insert a hole or change a stitch direction, those are going to be the tools that I'm going to use. Below that, we've got our selection tools. So those are select all or custom selection where I can draw around it like a lasso. 
Below that, we have our color palette. Our color palette gives us a range of colors to choose from. The large element is the current color. If I were to start digitizing, that's the color I would be digitizing in. The small little sliver is the background color. So if I want to change the background color to match whatever garment I'm going on, I have the ability to do that. This next little batch down here, this is our active colors. These are the thread colors that I'm using in my design. And if I'm using the same color multiple times, it will only show up in here once because I only really need one cone of thread to do that. Below that, we have just kind of a, a pool of colors that we might want to use. So that's our color palette. To the right of that, we have our view window. And this big view window is where I do the majority of my work. When I'm digitizing, when I'm editing, when I'm manipulating a design, this is where I'm looking to do the majority of my, my work, my planning out, and I can get a nice visualization of what's going on there. Below that, I have some information about that. I have the zoom bar down here. Sorry. I have the zoom bar at the bottom, and I can change my zoom level by clicking on this drop down and choosing a new zoom level. So if I need to fit design, or I can zoom in to 4,000% to tiny, tiny stitches. I can zoom back to fit design. I've got that option. Next, I have my scale bar. So in this scale bar, I can see my stitch count. I can see the size of my design. Currently, the size of my design is set to points. So I'm seeing it in, in tiny, tiny, tiny measurements. If you want to change the size of or how your design is being measured, you can go to tools and options and measurement units. And here you have a grid work of what you want to be displayed. So my design size is currently being measured in points. I'm going to change that to inches to make this show up a little bit differently. It will show you whatever you have selected. If you have nothing selected, it will show you the entire design. I have mirror buttons, which will mirror my design. And then I have slow redraw. So if you're not sure how something is going to sew out, you can press this play button and watch it sew out on screen as it were sewing out, or as if it were sewing out on the machine. Now it's definitely sewing quite a bit faster, but it gives you a nice preview of how the stitches are going to push and in what order they're going to sew. So here you can definitely see that the, the doves are sewing first and then the partridge in the pear tree is sewing second. All right. To the right of that, we have the project view. And this project view is where I look at um, when I'm editing to see what is my sequence, what is my color sequence, and what are the different types of elements that are being used. Do I need to group them? Do I need to ungroup them? And how do I manipulate all of that as well as what are my input points and, and what are the X and Y locations of that? Now that's getting pretty technical and I don't do that all the time. That's only when I'm getting into the nitty gritty and digitizing and editing tiny little pieces. For the most part, I use it for figuring out what my sew order is and rearranging my designs. But that will give you kind of a nice overall view of what Design Shop looks like and where all your different toolbars and windows are going to be.